Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Are they pushing this down right now because they know that something big is on its way and they're trying to keep people out of the precious metals market for the, maybe the last time here? Well, yeah, there is something on fire. Uh, you can't even say it's behind the scenes. The emerging markets are on fire. I mean, if you look at their, their credit markets, you look at their currencies, they're imploding all over the world. Uh, interesting, this last smashdown in gold and silver has done what it's done before. If you go back to 2008, 2009, I think if you go to 2013, as of yesterday, due to all the supposed selling that pushes the gold and silver prices down, the U.S. Mint suspended deliveries because of too much demand. So why is this important? Why why are you bringing this up? Because if there's too much demand to the U.S. Mint, that tells you that there's absolute real demand for real metal. And that's been brought about by the price being pushed down too far by paper traders. And it's been my contention for years that when all is said and done, you're going to see uh, the, the COMEX paper futures go one direction and real metal go the other direction at some point in time you're going to see that comex futures and, and and paper gold paper silver are contracts that cannot perform and the value of a contract that cannot perform is zero and that's that's where paper gold and silver are going to go at the same time real physical gold and, and silver will be unattainable so they're going to blast off in, in opposite directions. Now, with the silver market, I mean, are they stopping the uh, selling of the silver coins because they don't have enough silver right now? Or are they doing for I, another? I, no, I, I, all I know is I, what I read. Uh, it was a, a note from uh, the U.S. Mint. They just said that there's, there's uh, too much demand. So whether they don't have enough silver or, you know, they've, they've depleted whatever stockpiles they've, they had ready for delivery, there is an interruption in deliveries. Now with, but, you, but think about it, Dave, it makes zero sense that if the price of silver got smashed, that would be due to, uh, to selling. And if you look at COMEX futures, and if you look at the amount of EFPs that have been shipped off to London exchange for physicals, the open interest, is at an all-time high. And the exchange for physicals so far this year is 2 billion ounces. There is not 2 billion ounces anywhere on the planet, probably in the history, in, in all of history, including the Manhattan Project, that could be delivered. So it just, it's a, it's a paper game. It's a fraud. It's an outright fraud. Now, JP Morgan, they've been accumulating a huge amount of silver in their comics warehouse, and it's reported that they have more than the 1980 Hunt Brothers and 1998 Berkshire Hathaway, more than they both did at those times. What's their reasoning for accumulating so much silver right now? They purportedly have uh, something like 700 million ounces. And the real question is, whose silver is it? Is it JP Morgan's? Uh, is it the U.S. Treasuries? Is it China's? Who knows? If you can tell me whose who's silver it is, then I can try to deduce, you know, why the, the strategy of amassing that amount. Obviously, somebody's amassed it because they understand that it's that that real silver above ground is scarce. What's going to be going to be more important when everything implodes? Is it going to be gold or silver? I mean, for people that are thinking like, "Ooh, I should buy gold or silver." What do you think is more important to ha hold on to here, silver or gold? Silver 
the silver to gold ratio now is just a tad over 80 to 1. It's historically been 15 to 1, and it comes out of the ground at 10 to 1. So silver is, uh, if gold is, is cheap, silver is super, super cheap. So I think from a performance standpoint, uh, I could see that ratio coming back to somewhere between 10 and 20 to 1 which means silver will outperform gold at least fourfold. Uh, the other thing is when the system does come down, there's only so many wealthy people that will have the ability to, to gobble up gold. And there's, a, there's billions of lesser wealthy people that will gobble up silver. In other words, silver is going to be poor man's gold. So I, I think you, you're just going to see an overwhelming demand from the little guy into the silver markets. I wanted to switch into the economy right now, and Trump is out there telling us that the GDP numbers are fantastic, unemployment is low. People are confused right now because from 2008, when we had the Great Recession going to 2009, we talked about the manipulation and GDP, unemployment, and everything else, and now all of a sudden, the economy is doing well. I mean, a lot of people are sitting there going, well, this doesn't make sense because one minute it wasn't doing well, the next minute it is doing well, and we know that these numbers are still manipulated is there a plan here? What What is his plan? We, we've seen, we're, we're, we're watching the, the the trade numbers and the trade numbers are getting getting worse. And the reason for that is a stronger dollar. And I've said now for well, a year anyway, the last year after about the first uh, six months of, of Trump's term, he started taking ownership of the stock market. And I have been saying, all along that I think that's a big mistake for him to own the stock market. I believe that, and, and you know, I'm on the record for saying, uh, I think truth bombs are going to matter. I believe that some truth is going to come out and all hell is going to break loose in markets. And I think Trump will be able to point at, well, Hey, everything was doing fine, but you know, this news came out and it is what it is. And we're going to have to deal with it. And what, what do you think this news is going to be? I mean, you have pointing to something specific or? Yeah, like we were talking about before the call. I mean, all these uh, these sealed indictments that are, are backlogged, um, I, I truly believe you're going to see military tribunals. And actually, his executive order back in January uh, talks about the, the, uh, the military code. So I think you're going to see I think you're going to see some uh, treason, some traitor. Uh, sedition cases. I think these the the there's going to be a huge explosion of of pedophilia uh, exposed cases, and I just and and also this Russia 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 thing is falling completely apart. And it, I mean, even by this weekend, if he declassifies the 20 FISA warrants, then we find out who signed them, and that the that whole thing is starting to fall apart. I mean now. Judicial Watch has found out that Peter Strzok was the one who saw, who who wrote uh, Comey's first draft. I mean, we're 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 getting closer and closer to the core, and uh, you know, I can't point and say it's going to be this or it's going to be that, but it's going to be the dirt. So, if this news, like you said, comes out, uh, what do you? How do you think this is going to affect the economy? Do you think the market's going to fall? Do you think we're going to see riots? Do you think people are just going to reject it and say uh, it's not real? I think you're going to see all of the above. I think you'll see some on the left just reject it and call it fake news. Um, I think there will be riots, and I also believe that that confidence will completely break in the system, and that will go hand in hand. By the way, with the fractional reserve nature of the gold and silver markets, there's going to be a cash call in those markets and that those markets will be exposed that the metal does not exist to deliver and that will spread and, and expose the rest of the fractional reserve nature of our entire financial system. So confidence is going to break. That's the bottom line. And I think Trump is going to be able to point at, Hey, I didn't do these things. They happened. And everything was, you know, everything was going along fine until confidence broke and, and he'll point at what what broke confidence. So do you think this is going to be the trigger for the economy collapsing finally? Uh, that could be a trigger. It also you could see uh, some of these emerging markets trigger it. I mean, the, the emerging markets 
and this is very similar to what happened back in uh, 2008 with the uh, with the credit. Supposedly, the, there was going to be no contagion. It was all contained. And they're saying, no, there won't be any contagion. I have, uh, let me relate this to you, some, some boots on the ground reconnaissance. I had an exchange student from Brazil live with me uh, back in the early 1990s for about a year. And I've kept in touch with him over the years. And I spoke to him uh, two days ago. And we generally don't talk business. Uh, he's from a very wealthy family. And I specifically wanted to ask him what the conditions were or are in Brazil. And he, he flat out told me, he said, oh, Bill, I've never seen things as bad as they are right now. And I asked him about interest rates. He told me that interest rates in Brazil right now for a collateralized loan, in other words, with a piece of property or something or a business uh, behind the loan, the interest rate is 20%. And I, I was shocked. And he said, but that's not the worst of it. He said an uncollateralized loan is a hundred percent. Now, what that tells me is that economy is dead. It cannot function. No economy can function with 20% rates, much less hundred percent rates. So, and that's just Brazil. Then you've got, uh, you know, you've got all the rest. You've got Argentina, you've got Turkey, you've got South Africa. I mean, there's a whole long list of them, and all of those countries have borrowed in terms of dollars, and that's the problem, is that they can't print dollars to pay back the debt. So these are going to be defaulted loans. So we're seeing the emerging markets right now where they're seeing inflation. They're seeing uh, interest rates. In yeah, system. hyperinflation. And now if they start defaulting, what then happens? Well, I mean, then, it, then you're talking about the banking system. Because one person's debt is another person's asset. And in these cases, you're looking at banks all around the world have lent dollars to these countries. And interesting, as of today, uh, emerging market stock markets as a whole have entered a bear market in their own currencies. So let, let me just go back to the news about the Pfizer warrants and stuff like that. Now, when the rest of the world hears about this and, and hears, you know, the corruption and, and what's going on here, will other countries look at this and start to lose faith in the U.S., in the, the U.S.'s economic system, the Fed and everything else that's here? Exactly. I mean, think about it. If you're a foreigner and you have capital in the United States and you find out uh, proof positive how dirty the United States has been. What are you going to do with your capital? You're going to, you're going to move it somewhere else. So if capital is pulled out of the U.S., this will just make matters worse then. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's, you know, when, when foreign, when, when capital gets withdrawn from a, a country, the currency drops, the bond market drops, which means interest rates go up and the overall bid to that system evaporates. So what you've got is sellers of, of dollars and dollar denominated assets that, that were not, you know, they, they sat in dollar denominated assets for years and years, but now they're become, then now they will become sellers. And who's going to buy? And the answer to that is the Federal Reserve. The Fed is going to be the, the lender, the buyer, the bid of last and only resort. I mean, add on top of this, uh, Trump has been criticizing the Fed where, you know, he came out and said, hey, listen, we shouldn't be raising rates right now. You know, debt's coming due soon. And but he made a like a, a remark to the to the in his quote saying that, you know, all right, but the Fed knows what's best for the country. So go ahead and do what you got to do. Do you think he's actually really saying that this is not good for the country? This is going to bring down the system and the Fed will be responsible for that? I think that Donald Trump is a lot smarter than Many people give him credit for. I believe he fully understands the system's going to come down and he's going to preside over the bankruptcy of the United States. And the only question is, uh, what form or manner does the, the system come down and how is the bankruptcy handled? Do you think this was all planned from the start? Uh, you could say it was planned all the way back to prior to just uh, 1913, prior to the, the beginning of the Fed. I mean, it's a predictable end. It's an absolutely predictable end. You can't, you can't know when, but you can know that eventually the amount of interest that's required to pay can't be paid. And that's where we are. Well, do you think that 
that what Trump is doing right now? Do you think this is a planned uh, takedown of the system? And he knows that if, you know, he lets the, he declassifies the IG report or declassifies the FISA pages, he knows that it's going to cause problems in the U.S. Do you think this was planned from the beginning to maybe reset the entire system and put those in prison who committed treason? Do you think this was all planned from, you know, many years ago where they finally got him into office and to push this forward? Uh, I don't know if he was planned to be put into office many years ago, but yeah, it, it is planned. I mean, this is a fight of light versus dark. And if, if Trump had lost, if Hillary had won, what kind of world would we be living in right now? None of this true, none of these truths would be coming out. I mean, li- none of it would have, would have come out. None, uh, the pedophilia, would not be being prosecuted. We would never have found out anything that was going on in the Department of Justice, the FBI. And now we're, we're, we're getting pretty, pretty close to some very real and, and ugly core truths. So, I mean, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten here. And I, I just do want to say now that we're on the, the second Supreme Court, uh, nomination by Trump, I said last year that him nominating and getting Gorsuch as a conservative on the Supreme Court, really that was my only hope during that election was that Trump would win so that because Scalia was already, you know, was already dead. It was an eight, an eight and eight, uh, Supreme Court and whoever won the presidency was going to tip the Supreme Court one way or the other. So now he's on his second pick and at the time a year ago, I, I made the comment that, you know, that's all I could have hoped for during, during the, uh, 2016 election. And now it looks like, I mean, it really looks like, uh, the war between light and truth or light and darkness. And, uh, it looks like the, the truth is starting to be extracted and, and darkness is going to lose. So when all this news comes out, how do you think the American people are going to handle this? Do you, do you think we would actually enter into some type of civil war or something like that? Yeah, I think it it, it will become complete pandemonium of uh, every man for himself. I think this the, the financial system is going to break down from a mathematical standpoint. That's the first thing. And then from a social standpoint and a divisiveness standpoint, I mean, look, Look at where this country is now versus where it was, say, 20 years ago. I mean, you have uh, you have the racial divisions, you have uh, religious divisions, you have, you know, they, they want to say that there's 23 different uh, sex genders. I mean, we're living in, in a crazy world where the right believes they're correct, the left believes they're correct, and hard and fast, uh, there's there's no changing any minds. And on top of that, when the financial system comes down, how do you think people are going to react when they're hungry? I mean, they're pissed off already. So if somebody's pissed off to begin with and then you make them hungry, what are you going to have? Is there anything that the Fed or Trump can do to maybe reboot the system? I mean, is it possible? No, I don't. In, not, in my opinion, no. The, the Go back to what we we're just talking about. From a mathematical standpoint, it's it's not rebootable. They rebooted it back in 2008, 2009. And they did that by completely blowing up central bank and sovereign treasury balance sheets. There's there's no one out there that can step up and reflate the system. So all they can do is monetize, which creates hyperinflation. And if hyperinflation was great, then, you know, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, et cetera, would be great places to live. They're not. And then you add on top of that the fact that not just this nation, but the world is so divided when when the financial system comes down and credit breaks, distribution will break down. I've talked about that many times. When distribution breaks down, goods are not going to make it to stores. And the old saying, you know, you wake up every morning and you're only 72 hours away from complete anarchy. That's three days of not having meals. How does Trump, the administration, or if the Fed is still there, how do they reset the system? Is this just going to, I mean, they're going to say, okay, we got to do away with what we have now and we have to bring a new system online. I mean, what, what do they do at this point? In order to, to create a new system, you got to wipe out, you got to let the old system fail. 
And the next banking system, whatever, whatever it, it will be, I firmly believe will have uh, currencies that are backed, not convertible, but backed on a ratio basis by both gold and silver. And if you look at what Russia and China and, and a lot of other countries in the world are doing, they are accumulating gold. And that tells me that the next banking system is is basically going to be uh, it'll be like a, a, a ballroom where where countries enter and the lady with the, the biggest gold necklace is going to be the most respected. So you don't think that the IMF is going to use the SDR to be like the next reserve currency? I think they're going to try. I believe there's going to be two resets. The first one's going to fail. And the first reset more than likely will be uh, the SDR. But what is the SDR? It's a basket of fiat currencies. So, I mean, how do you, that's like one drunk trying to hold up another drunk. So, I mean, since China and Russia have a lot of the gold, has Trump tried to get any gold back or do we have any gold? Uh, I I can't answer the first question. I, I don't know. Uh, the second question is from, from all the evidence I've seen, it looks like the U S has over many, many years bled dry our vaults. And if there is any gold left in Fort Knox, West Point, et cetera, uh, it's probably encumbered. In other words, it's lent out. Now, if that's the case, what happens when we try to reset the system? If you're saying we're going to be on like a gold back type of system and the U.S. has very little or no gold whatsoever and it's lent out and China and Russia have all the gold, what is the U.S., what do we do at that point? We got a big problem, don't we? Now, there are there are a couple of options. You could see a confiscation. Um, in the event of a confiscation, I would, would much prefer to have U.S. mint coins as opposed to uh, bars or, or foreign uh, foreign coins. If there's a confiscation, I would think bars and foreign coins would be confiscated first. The other thing is you could, you could see a national campaign. Uh, they might call it dig baby dig. In other words, start digging up the gold and silver reserves in the United States that would have to be sold to the treasury at, at, you know, some, uh, market, some market price, but it could become a national campaign to fill up you know, to catch up to the rest of the world. Remember, we were, we're supposed to be the largest holder of gold in the world. And we're, it's very possible we have, or highly probable, we have less than a thousand tons. So if we have less than a thousand tons and people were, you know, we're all worried that, you know, we've been purchasing gold or silver. People have been doing this. Not, not everyone in the country, but many people have. People have always been worried that, you know, I'm afraid that they're going to confiscate my gold. You know, if people sit there and they say, you know, I'm not handing this over, what happens then? Uh, if it got to that, I mean, you, you could possibly see an attempt at going door to door, but there'd be massive amount of deaths every single day. You know, p- generally people who own silver and gold also own lead. So I, I think, you know, you, right there, you asked, uh, will there be a civil war? Right there is reason for massive uprising. Let's continue on this. If if the U.S. has no gold and they're going to have to dig, like you said, and China and Russia, they have most of the gold because they've been purchasing for quite a while now. Are they the new powerhouse of the world now? Or are they the reserve currency? Are they is that where the manufacturing is that? Or are they the U.S. back in the 40s? You just answered your own question. So, yes, they have the money. They have the manufacturing. They have a they have a, a if you want to call it a, a hungry population not from a food standpoint, but from the standpoint of, you know, they're working, they're earning, they want to better themselves. It's like the U.S. was, like you just said, you know, 75, 100, 100 years ago. So the U.S. right now is, what does it become? An empty shell? The U.S. has become Britain after World War One and World War Two. Britain was the previous power. They lost power and, uh, you know, have basically just treaded water and are no longer, uh, you know, no longer a world power. The, the difference is the U.S. from a military standpoint, you know, there's the U.S. does have obviously uh, a military that could end the world. So, I mean, that's obviously a danger is seeing the table get kicked over. If we can't run the show, there's no show. 
Do you, do you think the deep state, when all this information starts to come out about the 20-page FISA, maybe the Inspector General report, when it starts to you know get all declassified, do you think the deep state will try some type of an event or maybe try to start a war? Uh, yeah, I would definitely keep my eyes open for what very well could be a false flag. And what scale do you, I mean, what scale do you think this will be on? Do you think it's going to be like a, another type of shooting or do you think it's going to be no, this something is, on the scale of 911? Yeah, this is pretty much for all the marbles. I mean, we're, like I said, we're, we're getting down to some very core truths. And if the core truths get exposed, you're, you're going to see, uh, the left completely lose power. And I don't think, I don't think they're going to give that up willingly. So, you know, your imagination is as good as mine as, as to what or how grand a false flag could be. So are you thinking that this is going to happen like we've been talking about between uh, now and the election time? Do you think that that's the time frame where we think that this is going to happen? That would be most likely. Well, Dave, I mean, if if the news from Sarah Carter today is that by the weekend and the weekend is just a couple days away or by the end of the week is what she put it. Uh, he may release that if that if this gets released, it, it pretty much is a domino. And it'll set things in motion. So to answer your question, yeah, I, I think uh, the most likely time is between now and the election. So all the things that we talked about in the past with the economy, with your pensions, your savings, dollars that you have in the bank, dollars that you have, you know, maybe hidden at home, things like land and, and the stock market. Does that is that just going to disappear? Is it going to drop down to zero? Uh, obviously, land doesn't disappear. and doesn't drop to zero. Stocks won't go to zero. They'll probably take a pretty big hit. Um I do think that the the conf when I say a pretty big hit, I mean a, a 50% drop in the stock market would would leave the markets still overvalued at this point. I think you're going to see the dollar get get smashed versus international currencies and completely collapse versus silver and gold. And I also think you're going to see uh interest rates break free from the Fed and trade at much higher levels um in order to attract capital to the United States. And you think this is when all the manipulation comes to an end, like with gold and silver? Right. Markets will, will overpower the, the derivatives that are being used by the e, uh, ESF, the plunge protection team, etc. And the value of gold and silver, where do you think, I mean, I'm, I don't need an exact amount, but where do you think this is going to go? Because right now, what, what is silver, like 1415 and gold is around 1200. Is it going to go up a lot or? Dave, I did a, I did a, uh, a mathematical equation. If you took the 21 trillion that the U.S. owes and divided that by the amount of gold that we supposedly have, and that's, that's a big assumption because like we were just talking about, I don't think the gold's there. But assuming it is there, you come up to a number of eighty-seven thousand dollars per ounce, and that's and that's, that's just to cover the twenty-one trillion of debt. That does not uh, cover any future promises, pensions, you know, Ginny Mae, Fannie Mae, uh, Social Security, et cetera, et cetera. And what about silver? Uh, if you had an eighty-seven thousand dollar price on on gold, and the ratio was 15 or 20 to 1, you do the math. That's quite a bit. It's, it's a lot more than 14 or $15. <laughs> it's, well, it's in the thousands. Yeah. For right now, I mean, everything that we've been talking about, and we've been talking about this for quite a while, I interviewed you many, many times. I mean, we're coming down to... It's the, coming to it, a head, Dave. Yeah, it's all coming to a head, and, and we're going to be seeing this happen very, very soon. I think so. Well, Bill, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight uh, once again, how can people see your work? Uh, you can go to www.jsmindset.com. And I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm going to be on uh, Bill and Jim's YouTube channel. Be, uh, we're going to be recording uh, next Wednesday at 4.30. Is that live or is just is that a recording? No, we're, we're going to record it. And we'll do it as a YouTube. Or we, may, we end up may, uh, doing it as a Vimeo if YouTube takes us down again. Yeah, and this will be, uh, we plan to interview uh, you, Dave, uh, Greg Hunter, Sean from SGT, and also uh, Dr. Dave John Janda. Uh, basically, the topic is going to be censorship. And I, I mean, who else better to ask than you guys? Because, you know, you've been censored, 
uh, taken down, put back up, threatened, you name it. So, right. and any anything and, and no holds barred, basically. Bill, once again, thank you very much for being on the spotlight. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave.